Okay, so want to talk for a second about a little bit more about brains. Um, this is an interactive activity. Um, feel free, you don't have to do this um, uh, on screen, but you can. Um, but I'm going to try to back up so that we can do this. Okay, so our brain, right? We have the front of our brain and the back of our brain. So I want you to put your hand out like this. Hello, hi hand. Okay, so as we're thinking about this, this is our head, right? And this right here, my arm is like my spine. So if you touch the back of your wrist right here, this is like the base of your brain. So here's my spine coming up to my head and here's the base of my brain, right? So this is my head. So this part of my brain back here and kind of up through here, this is the base of my brain. And this is the first part of our brain that evolves. So this is kind of our mammalian brain. This is survival state. This is what makes sure that, you know, even if we're in a horrible car accident and we're considered brain dead, this part of our, our brain is gonna make sure that we're still fighting to breathe, you know, continuing sort of those, those basic functions. Um, and that's this part of this base of our brain, the survival state. So take your thumb and wrap it right on in right there. So this, these are our emotions and feelings. This is our amygdala. And then right there on our thumbnail is where the hippocampus is, which is where our memories are. And so these are our feelings, um, uh, memories. And that's also why if you think about feelings that amygdala and that it's so close to the hippocampus, which is where the memories are, um, that th those are so, so closely connected. Um, and then take your fingers and wrap them right around your nice little amygdala. And this up here is our hippocampus. This is our prefrontal cortex. So up here, um, sorry, not hippocampus, our prefrontal cortex. This is where logic, ration, decision-making, um, that's where all this is. That's our executive state, which is right up here at the front of our head. Um, and this is where if I'm getting ready to make a choice that I think about what happened in the past and whether it was good or bad, um, whether the outcome was good or bad, and this is where good decision making happens. Um, so we have a lot of these brains, right, coming into our schools and other contexts every day. So we have students who come to school and they are, you know, fully functioning, everything's regulated. This is a well-regulated brain, ready to learn, ready to retain information. Um, this is who we oftentimes want to be in our class, right? Um, and want to be in our schools. And of course, we know that young people don't always come to school in this space, um, because what happens is that sometimes when we get dysregulated and we have big feelings, if we have a really big kind of um, memory that then is triggered, here comes trauma, then what happens is actually that this prefrontal cortex literally pops up and this is flipping our lid, right? So this is a lot of like, they talk about this in conscious discipline, but this is how our brain works, right? So I'm regulated. I have a tough memory. I have a lot of big feelings and literally my prefrontal cortex doesn't function the way that it's supposed to. And so this is a dysregulated child. So this is a dysregulated child who cannot access their prefrontal cortex to make good choices, to be rational, to be logical, to think through past experiences, think about consequences and rewards and things like that. And so part of what we're doing with trauma responsive schools is trying to, to help make this part, this prefrontal cortex as sticky as possible, right? So that then we can have feelings, we can regulate our feelings and not flip our lids, right? Um, so the trick here is that if this is the child, right, we have a brain too, and we are also sometimes regulated and sometimes not regulated and usually kind of somewhere in between, right? Because the state, you know, this changes all the time. The trick is that wherever we are, wherever I am, that's the best that I can expect from someone else. So if I'm regulated, I can expect regulated from another interaction, from a child, from an adult. But if I come in like this, this is the best I can expect, right? So this is not a good scenario. I'm not regulated. This person is regulated. And all of a sudden, this person is becoming dysregulated because this is not good. This means that there's no regulation happening. And so we have to remember that we too are contributing kind of to the regulation that's happening across our brains. Um, this hand activity specifically, and, and we'll send you some videos and there's visuals online that you can do is really helpful. Professional development wise, I would say this is one of the, like in terms of trauma informed school pieces, one of the most effective, the stickiest things that I do. Um, I have folks years later who will see me, they don't remember my name, they remember this and they'll, you know, they'll say, oh, hey, look, and they'll go like this and point to their hand 
and I'll see that it's regulated. And what they're trying to communicate to me is that their brain is regulated, which is terrific. Um, in schools, absolutely, schools teach this. Some folks um, teach this and use wizard brain and lizard brain or the upstairs brain and the downstairs brain. But part of the trick here is to teach um, around how our brains work um, and then how we can um, try to um, become regulated, stay regulated, um, and um, help each other stay regulated in those processes.